Hi, good day everyone. Okay, I'm Stanny, and today I'll be showing you guys on how to use SPSS for data entry, data analysis, and also data reporting. Okay, so before I start, uh, I would like to show. Okay, I would like to show the example of a research framework that I'll be using for this uh, workshop. Okay, the sample of a research framework is uh, consists of three independent variables. Okay, observability, compatibility, and trialability, and the dependent variable adoption intention. Okay, so in this study, uh, later in the later, the sample that I'm going to use later, there will be four items for each of these variables. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, the uh, discussion on this uh, or the workshop on data entry by showing you guys how to set up a template in SPSS from zero. Okay, so now let us go to uh, empty templates uh, in empty templates in uh, SPSS. Okay, this is how empty templates in SPSS look alike. And uh, what you have to do in the very first step is to go to the variable view that you can find it at the bottom left of the corner of this uh, SPSS software. Just click it, okay, it should be empty. Okay, so what you have to do now is uh, you have to design a template for it. Okay, so what I'll advise my uh, students to do is uh, when it comes to the first row, Okay, I will advise students to label it as number. Uh, as in data collection, we will usually number the questionnaires that we have. So the first row is meant for the numbering of the questionnaire. Okay, we just put it number over there and we leave the rest at this. Okay, when it comes to the second row, you are required to key in or to design the template for your demographic. Okay, so what I will, I will advise my students to do is when it comes to the second row under the name column, you are required to use demographic D1. Okay, I advise you to use D1 as a symbol for demographic first item. Okay, so demographic first item, you refer to the questionnaire, let's say it is about gender. So what you do is you have to go to the label, label over here and you type gender. Okay, then next go to the value for gender and put in the values that you can see from the questionnaire. So. It's common that we see uh, in the questionnaire where the first option for gender will be male. Okay, and the second option will be female. Okay, put in the options that you have in the questionnaire and click OK. It will appear here. Okay, key in and do it for all the demographic items that you have. So, for example, let's say the second demographic item is about income level personal income level okay the same thing put, after you put the label after you put the, the the symbol you go to the label you type the income level then you go to the value okay usually in malaysia uh we will set the uh lo the first option based on the lowest income level that we have in the the minimum uh income level that we have in malaysia so it's usually it will be thousand five and below Okay, maybe the second option that you have the questionnaire will be RM1501 to RM2000. Okay, and the third option might be RM2001 to RM3000. Okay, you have to get any more. You have to put in all the options that you have as according to the questionnaire that you are holding. Okay, so and for demographic items, it's common for us to change the measurement to nominal. To nominal okay uh the next is uh of course you have to keen all for the uh for the demographic items that you have lah. okay so for this workshop i'll just show you only two samples of demographic uh template creation okay the next template creation is for the item okay example let's say uh just now i have three i have three independent variables okay the first independent variables uh, let's say is uh observability Observability. So I will not put in observability okay as the symbol. I'll just put OBS, the short form for observability, and I'll put one indicating the first question for this particular variable. Okay, so a reminder to everyone in the class, uh when it comes to SPSS, you must make sure that under the name column, the symbol that you put shouldn't have any blank space. Okay, example, you cannot put OBS blank one. Okay, the system will treat this uh, empty space and as an illegal character. 
So what you have to do is that you can label it as OBS1 or you can put an, under, an underscore over that. OBS underscore one as the symbol for the first item for observability. Okay, then you go to the label, you type the questions in the questionnaire. Okay, example, I can see others using this product. Okay, the second for uh, observability, you have to put it into, okay, just example, I'll put it over here. Let's see. I can I can see, okay, I can see others uh, purchasing or I can see other purchasing this product from store. Okay, just an example for the labels for the question is, okay, the, uh, what's important over here is uh, when it comes to the uh, variables item, you must make sure that you put in the correct values, okay? Uh, it's common that in uh, social science where you see uh, social science, you see quantitative studies are using Likert scale. Okay, and it's uh, quite common to, to have five Likert scale uh, as the uh, measurement scaling for uh, this kind of quantitative studies. Okay, so what I advise uh, to students is to look into the question nest, put in the Likert skills as according to the question nest that you have proposed in your research. Okay, so let's see, like a skill, the skill number one, usually it will be strongly disagree. Okay, followed by like a skill two, it will be disagree. Three will be neutral. Sorry. Three, the label should be neutral. Four should be agree. Five should be strongly Okay, so example, let's say you have uh, observability three, four, and so oh, yeah, I'll just put an example on here. Okay, just put ABC over here. Okay, let's say this five uh, belongs, uh, the belongs uh, to the uh, items variable. So what you can do is uh, when it comes to the value, you can choose to right click on it and paste it for all the variables items. So, okay, this will be the easiest way lah, for you to just uh, copy and paste uh, the values that share the similar Likert scale. Okay, so when it comes to the measurements for uh, variables item, uh, we are usually using Likert scale like what I mentioned earlier. So the measurement should be in scale. We shouldn't choose ordinal or nominal. Okay, they should be a scale, a scale measurement. Okay, so once you've done these, uh, once you've done creating the template for your questionnaire, okay, you have to go back to the data view and start king in the data. Okay, so if let's say this is the first question that you have to put one over here. Okay, and you have to flip through the first question, let's say the demographic first item, the first uh, respondent is a female. So when it comes to demographic, you have to put two. You have to put two because two will be the options. The second option for gender will be female. Okay, put in all these uh, responses in, into this tablet. Okay, that's uh, that is what you should do for your uh, data entry. Okay, that's all with data entry. So once done with your data entry, then we will move to the second part of the uh, workshop where we will be looking into data analysis and reporting. Okay, data analysis and reporting is a bit lengthy, yeah? so I will split it to a few sections. But before that, uh, but before that, uh, this is the sample they have created. They have uh, they have created for this workshop. Okay, where it consists of like what I said, there are four, there are there are three independent variables. Okay, and one dependent variable, and each of these variable will have four items. Okay, and we have uh eight, we have eight uh, demographic items and the one over here labeled as fake it is a fake variable that I've created by myself okay the reason i have this fake item over here is uh, it's just to demonstrate something to you later under reliability test okay so this is how uh uh, uh this uh SPSS template should look alike and this is how the data entry should look like under the data view 
Okay, so you have to make sure that you key the data correctly. Okay, since you are using only five Likert scale, please make sure that all the responses for all the items, okay, are within the five Likert scale range. You have to cross check, you have to check. Okay, make sure you don't see any six, seven, nine, ten, okay, under the responses for these uh, items. Okay, please check. Yeah? So once uh, done the screening, then you can begin with your data analysis. Okay, so before we start with data analysis, okay, I would like to share something on data recording. So what is data record? Okay, data record, okay, data record is for you to change a negative statement to a positive statement. Okay, for example, we look at this observability. Okay, observability. Okay, all, all these questions sounds like uh, I can observe, I can see, I can notice. But what if one of your questions is a negative statement? Others could not see me using this product. So for negative statements, you have to record it. So how can we record? Okay, this is the steps. Go to SPSS, click transform, record into the same variables and put in the variable. Okay, put in the variable. Example, let's say, example, uh, I can observe these uh, products. I can observe others, uh, I can observe this product being used. Okay, you put it in, then we put, we click the old and new values. So what we have to do is uh, for value one, the, the, the value one, we have to replace it with five. Then you click add. Okay, I put it in over here. So the old value one, you have to replace with five, you have to record it to five. The old value two, you have to record it to four, three to three, four to two, and five to one. Once done, then you click, then you click continue and OK. Okay, you will realize that the data for the first, for the first one was recorded. So initially this was two and this was five. So it has been recorded automatically, okay, automatically uh, using the functions of transform. Okay, transform and recording. Okay, since we are not going to, since uh, there's no negative statements in this uh, data, so I'm going to record it back. Okay, I'm going to record it back lah, to the normal data. So this I'm going to record it back. Okay, so it, it will turn back to the normal ones now. Okay, this is the actual data. Okay, then this is uh, what you need to do if you have negative statements in your questionnaire. You have to run the recording. Okay, once done the recording, then we will move, we'll go to the first analysis, we call it as a uh, reliability test. Okay, for reliability test, what you have to do is you will have to go to analyze. Okay, you go to skill and you choose reliability analysis. Okay, so what you have to do is uh, you have to pick all the items that belongs to the similar variable and put it into this box move it into this box okay so from here you can see okay this is observability one this is observability two four and five these four are belongs it belongs to the observability variable so what i have to do is i'll put it in then i click statistics i choose scale if item deleted continue then press okay this is the results Okay, this is the results of a reliability test for the first variable, which is observability. So from here, you look at this uh, reliability statistics. Okay, look at the combat alpha value. The combat alpha value is 0 0.825. Okay, with four items included into the reliability analysis. So if you refer to the uh, research method textbook, combat alpha must be at least 0 0.7 and above. Okay, to show certain reliable measurement for a particular variable so this result shows that all these four items are consistently measuring the variable in the similar way okay this is combat alpha so this is how you get the results okay this is how the result should look alike and you should draw this table this reliability table and put it into your put it into your final year report, final year project report, FYP report. Okay, so you put it in draw this table there. Okay, name it as variable. 
and put it in the variable. Let's say the first one is trialability, a observability. Okay, the number of items that we have is four and we are not deleting any one. So you could just put a dash there and you put in the combat alpha value. Okay, just put in the combat alpha value. Then what you have to do is you have to go back to the SPSS again, rerun the similar process for the second, third, and the fourth variable. So for these studies, I have three independent and one dependent. So I will need to run four times of this reliability test, okay, to test the reliability of all the variables that I have in my model. Okay, so uh, before I proceed to the next analysis, I would like to show you, okay, what if I've accidentally put in a wrong item into the reliability test that doesn't belong to the variable. Okay, let's do this for our observability. Okay, I actually put in one, the fake ones. Okay, the fake ones. Okay, before that, right, before I put in the fake one, just now we, we run it. Okay, uh, previously the result shows that uh, for observability, the combat alpha is 0 0.85. Okay, so what if I added in one uh, item that doesn't belong to this variable? Okay, so let us try with that. Okay, let's go to SPSS. Okay, I put in the fake ones okay uh together with the observability items okay then i click okay okay the results shows that the combat alpha value has reduced from 0 0.825 to 0 0.654 okay so over here you can see the items is five is the four so over here uh there's a bottom there's a table at the bottom the bottom of the reliability statistics so you can see what you refer to the last column okay you realize that actually these fake items is not belonging it's not belong to this group of items why because once we delete this item fake item away the entire chromba alpha value will increase from 0 0.654 to 0 0.825 so under such situation when the chromba alpha value is below 0 0.7 we will encourage the students to drop away the items that brings down the overall chromba alpha value so in this situation, we must drop the fake item and remain this four. So once we drop this fake, it will increase. Okay, once we drop these fake items, the combat alpha value will increase to 0 0.825. Okay, so if you don't believe, we can rerun it again. Lah. Okay, the result will be similar to the one that we have. Okay, so this is a fake analysis. Uh, this is a trial one. So what I'm going to do is I will delete. Okay, I have to delete these uh, results. Lah. Okay. Uh, delete the results from our output okay that's uh for reliability test okay it's for reliability test huh? okay so remember to draw this box so in this box uh in this table you should have the variables in the model listed down here with the combat above values listed on the right side okay this is for the reliability test okay uh the second step that we the second analysis that we're going to do is uh it's called demographic profiling. Okay, but before that, once you've done a reliability test, we should have something called as data computing. Okay, what is data computing? Okay, so assuming, uh, okay, class uh, students, I need you to assume that all the four items, the combat alpha values are above 0 0.7. Okay, just assume that all these combat alpha values for all the items are above 0 0.7. So we will keep all the items, we are not going to delay it. We will use all of these items in the remaining analysis. So once the, the reliability test has, has confirmed our item, we will have to compute. So how can we compute? Okay, what is computing? Computing is a process of combining the variables, the items for one variables into a single value. Compute. Okay, so how can we do that? Okay, what we have to do is number one, we have to go, the first step, we have to click transform in SPSS. Then we go. Then we click compute variable. Uh, uh, SPSS calculator will appear. Okay, so these items that we're going to put in are for observability. So observability one, I click one, plus observability two, plus observability three, plus observability four. There are four items. So I'm going to sum up all these items and divide by four because they're four items so this is a it's like a new compute value for observability 
So what I'm going to do is I will put it TOT. TOT represents for total for observability OPS. Okay, so once I've done this, I click OK. Okay, you will have to go back to the data. You go back to the data view. You put it to the right side. You will see a new a new column appears. Okay, this column is the uh overall the average for all the items for observability. Okay, you will have to compute this for all for all the variables. Okay, so for this study, I have to compute it now lah, because I I don't have the computed uh the computed uh values. Okay, so I have to do it for four types for all the four variables. Okay, so we will have to go back to the compute. Okay, the same thing, but I'm going to remove for the observability items. Okay, I'm going to click communicability plus this plus this plus this. Okay, the same thing. This is not observability anymore, so it is the communication uh, communicability. So I'm going to put it CUM. Okay, so we go back to the data. You realize that the, the communicability is a uh, column of this. Same thing, we are going to, we are going to do it for the third one. Okay, I'm going to delete communicability. Then we will go to the third one, the trialability. Okay, this is trialability. Okay, there are only four. So this is trialability, total for TRI. Okay. Okay, we go back to SPSS, trialability, computer values are there. Then we will have to compute the last one for our dependent variable. Okay, same thing, dependent variables, uh, they are over here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the uh, independent variable, so we call it as uh, intention to adopt IE. Okay, so we have all the four computer columns appearing in the SPSS uh, data. Okay, so once done with the uh, data computing, we can start with our first, uh, the second analysis, which is a demographic analysis. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, we go to SPSS, we go to analyze, we click descriptive statistics, we go to frequency. Okay, for frequency, we put in all the demographic items and click OK. Okay, the results will be all over here for all the demographic items. So to, to put it into your final year report, your FYP report, you are required, okay, you are required to draw a table that looks like this demographic profile okay so in this uh, table there will be three columns the column at the left will be demographic variables the one in the middle will be the frequency which is the number and the one the one on the right side will be the percentage will be the percentage okay so if you look at the SPSS output okay uh, we have 46 females 46 male and 54 females Okay, and the percentage are over there. Okay, you, what you have to do is to transfer this frequency and percentage into the table that you have drawn in your FYB. Transfer that and report it. Okay, transfer that, transfer it over there and report it. Okay, this is for demographic profiling. Eh? Okay. The next is about descriptive statistics. Okay, it is about descriptive statistics. So when it comes to descriptive statistics, okay, what we have to do is we have to go to SPSS. Okay, we click analyze, we go to descriptive the same, but we are going to click descriptive this time. Okay, so what you have to do, okay, descriptive, you have to show the mean, okay, the average for all these items, put it in for observability. Let's say, okay, this is the first variable, put it in for observability including the total 
then click OK. Okay, you have these results. Okay, this is the descriptive. You have the, the, the results over here. Okay, so what I do is to go to your report and draw a table that looks like this. Draw a table that looks like method one for descriptive analysis. Okay, so draw a table with three columns. The column at the left will be the items for one variable. So you have, let's say this is observability one. You put in the, you type in the sentence, you put the mean value and the standard division value in the box, in the table. Okay, into the table. So the results will be something over something like this for descriptive. So you can see, you can just copy the sentence over here and put it into the box, put it into the box that you have prepared and copy the mean value and standard division values only. Okay, the other values you can ignore them. Okay, ignore them. Okay, so for descriptive, we want only the mean and standard division. Okay, put these tables and you will need to prepare four tables if you have four variables. Okay, if you have five variables, you have to prepare five tables and rerun the steps that I've shown you in the expressor just now, which is uh, analyze, descriptive, and descriptive. Okay, remove all these items, put in the next set, put it in, and do not forget the total. Put it in, and you will have the second descriptive okay results for the second variable so in this case uh, this will be uh common capability okay do this uh four or five times as according to the number of uh, items that you have in your research framework okay this will be descriptive okay once you've done with your descriptive next you will have to run a normality test Okay, normality test. So what is normality test? Okay, normality test, how do we do it? Uh? I'll explain what are these uh, tests about, okay, after uh, after I showed you how to use the SPSS to click it. Okay, the process is SPSS. Uh? After I do, after I showed you all the SPSS, I will show you how to report it later. Okay, so when it comes to, uh, when it comes to this normality test, okay, the same thing, we will be using the similar process. We have to click analyze. We go back, we go to descriptive and we go to descriptive again. Okay, in this round, we remove all the items and we put in only the grand means. The total for all the variables. Then don't click yes, go to option. Okay, go to option, click cortosis, click skewness. Cortosis and skewness. Okay, once I click both of it, then click yes. You have a table that looks like this, but with additional skewness and cortosis results at the back. Okay, at the back. So what you do is uh, you have you are required to go to your report and draw a table for normality test that looks like this. Okay, so the same thing. In the table, there will be three columns. The first column will be for the variable. Okay, the second column will be for the skewness. The third will be for the cortosis value of the variables. Okay, so we just take this, uh, we just take these statistics values only. Standard error, ignore it. We are not going to put it into the report. Okay, just take the statistics values for both skewness and cortosis and put it into your FYP report. Okay, that's for the normality test. Okay, the last one. Okay, the last test will be multiple linear regression or correlation. Okay, multiple linear regression or correlation. Okay, uh, when your framework looks like this, with the arrow pointing from the independent to the dependent okay when you have your you have to refer to your framework okay if let's say in your framework 
all the dependent variables are pointing towards the dependent variable, the, the statistics or the analysis that you're going to run should be multiple linear regression. Okay, but if let's say you have a double headed arrow, you have an arrow pointing from observability to adoption intention, and in the same time, the arrow is two headed. Adoption intention is also pointing towards observability. So if the arrow is two headed or the arrows are two headed, you must use correlation. You must use correlation. Correlation. Okay, so in today's workshop, I will not discuss about correlation. I will be discussing multiple linear regression. Okay, so how do we do it? Okay, multiple linear regression. Okay, we go to analyze. We go to the SPSS, we click analyze. We go to regression and click linear, the first one. Okay, so what you have to do is we put in only the total. So in this model, the total will be the adoption intention. Okay, and the independence will be observability, uh, communicability, and trialability. Okay, we have to put it in here under independence. Okay, once done, keep the rest as original. We just need to push the OK button. Okay, uh, but somehow uh, there are some uh, some lecturers will request the students to report the correlation as well. Okay, but uh, since that uh, in the framework of this study, okay, the arrows is only one single direction pointing from the IV to the DV, so we will not we are not required to report the correlation. So we will not need to keep the correlation correlation. Okay, but if you want to have the correlation value, you can go to you can go to options. If not mistaken, is it Lana? You can go to statistics and choose correlations what is correlations uh, okay i've forgotten where it is uh once i'm able to find it i'll put it into the next workshop. okay just click okay you have the results with four different tables okay with four different tables so the first table is the variables entered or removed so we are putting in three independent variables okay so we have the model summary we have the ANOVA we have the coefficient tables so what you have to do is uh, when, it, when it comes to the reporting you are required to draw a multiple linear regression tables that looks like this that looks like this Okay, so same thing at the top, you will have the you will have four columns, okay, with the left column stating down the variable the independent variables. So in my study, I have three. So I should have three three rows over here. Okay, so the the second column will be t value, the third will be the t significant value, and the last one will be the standardized beta value. Okay, and at the bottom you have required to report the R square the F value and the F significant value. So where can we find them? Okay, where can we find this the T significant value, T values and the standard beta? Okay, if we go back to the uh, output of SPSS, okay, the T value can be found under the coefficient table. Okay, the T values are over here. Okay, and the T significant value is just next to the T. It's over here. Okay, 0 0.135, 0 0.86, 0 0.664. Okay, 0 0.664. Okay, these are uh these are the these are the t significant value. Okay, uh on the other side, okay, we will have to also include we also have to include r square f value and f significant value. Okay, where can we find it? Oh yeah, I forgot about standard beta. Okay, standardized beta is here. It's just next to the T. We call it as a standardized coefficient beta. You can find the standardized beta over here, the value. Okay, where can we find the F value? The F value is here. The F significant value is next to it. Okay, it's next to it. 
Okay, where can we find the R square value? The R square value is under the model summary. You can see over here. Okay, so in this uh, mod, in the results, we can see 0 0.33 will be the R square value. Okay, take out these values and put it into the table and report it into your FYP. So the rest of the the rest of the uh figures that you obtain from this analysis, you can choose to ignore them. Okay, we will only report these these values in our FYP for multiple linear regression. Okay, so that's all for the uh uh for the data analysis and in terms of uh, reporting the figures into your fytp report so now how are we so now how are we going to explain the results that we have obtained from spss okay so the final part of this uh workshop it is about explaining okay you you you, you shouldn't be just putting the table there Okay, and then assuming that the examiner will analyze it by themselves. Okay, uh, interpret it by themselves. Okay, the interpretation should be that. So how can we report the tables and interpret the results in the tables? Okay, this will be the final part in uh, today's uh, workshop. Okay, we'll look into interpretation. You know? So we will begin with the first one, reliability test. Okay, reliability test. Okay, let's see the result for reliability test. Okay, for let's see. Okay, let's say this is for observability. Okay, let's see this off for observability. Yeah. So how are we going to explain the observability? The results is a zero point eight two five. 0 0.825. So how are we going to explain this result 0 0.825? Okay, how can we explain it? Okay, uh for combat alpha, let's see this uh the name the variables is uh is called as uh this should be uh observability. Okay, so if you refer to the notes that I prepared, okay, when it comes to reliability tests, you should stick down the combat alpha value. And compare with the reference measurement and conclude the level of reliability. This is how you should interpret the results for reliability test. Okay, example. Okay, in this study, the chrome bar. Lana, okay, I'll just type it down here. Okay, the chrome bar alpha value is uh, for observability is recorded at 0 0.825 okay this is the reporting here firstly you have to report the value you have to state out the value then next you have to compare with the reference measurement so uh it's common for us to compare with George Mallory let's say I love to compare with George Mallory yeah so according to Judge Mallory, this uh, reliability this reliability value is said to be is said to be um it's not it's not acceptable. It is actually considered as good when it is above 0 0.8. Okay, according to Judge Mallory, yeah. Okay, above 0 0.8 is considered as good, above 0 0.7 is considered as acceptable, uh, above 0 0.9 is considered as excellent. So if you put it if we uh if you refer to Judge Mallory, so 0 0.825 it should be considered as good so over here we can explain this way okay we continue our, our interpretation this way okay according to george and mallory i think it's 2003 or 201 i don't remember okay uh, 2010 okay the reliability reliability of these verb of the items of this variable is considered as good okay it's considered as good okay it's considered as good so lastly okay lastly the level of reliability has been concluded so you will have to say that okay therefore all 
four items for observability will be kept for the future analysis of this study. Okay, this is the way you can interpret. Okay, you can interpret the result for reliability test for one variable. So you have to repeat, you have to put you have to repeat these interpretations four times or five times as according to the number of variables that you have. Okay, so for my study, I have to repeat this lah. This interpretation uh four times, three for the uh independent variables and one for the uh, dependent variables. Okay, this is uh the interpretation for reliability test. Okay, the next is for I think I'll skip demographic lah. Okay, for demographic profiling, I'll skip. I think it will be easy. Okay, you just have to report how many males, how many females are there. Okay, let's say I just pick one as example lah. Okay, for demographic, yeah. Okay, for let's say this is a. Uh, this is the one for gender. Okay, let's say for demographic. Okay, this is for gender okay for gender okay for example okay okay this is the way i mean to read it okay the i will i'll begin my discussion okay by saying that uh there are 100 qualified responses collected for this study So, forty-six percent of the respondents are reported as males, whereas the balance of fifty-four percent are reported as females. Okay, that I will continue. Let's say the the next one will be. The next, the next one will be uh let's say age range. Okay, uh you can change your elaboration start. Okay, you can change your elaboration start. So maybe over here what I can say is uh, okay, then I will I might I might I might explain this way. Okay, uh majority of the respondents are in the 21 to 30 years, uh, 30 years old age group. Are report are uh, in the 21 to 30 years old age group. Okay, then I'll put the bracket over here. So 21 to 30, how many are they? 21 to 30, we have a 59. 59, okay, I'll put 59%. Followed by by below 21 26 percent below 21 years old 21 percent and blah 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 okay this is uh this is the way you can interpret okay you can use your own creativity to interpret the data for the demographic background of the respondents okay so i'll leave this a uh, demographic uh background to you guys lah. okay so this will be demographic yeah, not gender Okay, the next will be descriptive. Okay, descriptive. So if we go to descriptive, this is for observability. Okay, this is for observability, yeah? For observability, yeah? Okay, descriptive. So observability, the result looks like this. Hold on, now I'll just have to paste it over here so that we can type it. Properly. Okay, we can type it lead. Lana, let me get it done. Okay, this is descriptive. So how am I gonna explain it? Okay, how am I gonna explain? It? Okay, if you look at this, okay, if you look at the notes that I prepared, okay, for descriptive statistics, the interpretation, you must begin with stating down the mean and standard deviation for the items, then compare with the neutral point. 
then you conclude. Then you conclude. Okay, example. This is item one. Okay, this is the first one. It's item OBS one. So I will I will interpret this way. Okay, item OBS one is recorded with a mean value of 3.40. And over here, I put the bracket standard deviation equals to 0 0.91. Okay, this is the first one. You have to report the mean value. Then you are required to compare with the neutral bond. So what it means by the neutral bond? Okay, in, in this study, we have used a uh, five Likert skill. So for five Likert skill, the neutral point will be three. Will be three. Okay, so you have to say that, okay, the, this mean value is recorded, or, or you can say it's more than the neutral point of three. Therefore, these results explains that most of the respondents agree that look at the first and look at the sentence agree that they can observe this private label being used by others Okay, you have to repeat this interpretation four times for four items if you have four. Okay, this is the interpretation for items. So what about the one, that the, the, the total at the, at the bottom? What about the one at the bottom? Okay, so if let's say I duplicate this, okay, I remove it. Okay, as for the granny of observability, Variable. Okay, the mean value is three three point four three point four three. Okay, then the same thing. I'll put the standard deviation. Okay, standard deviation value equals to zero point seven nine six. Okay, so this again the same thing you have to compare. So this uh, brand new value is more than the new support of three. Therefore, these results indicate that most respondents if most respondents think Okay, in the case of most of the thing that this private label is observable. Is observable. Is observable. Okay, so you have to change it as according to the variable that you have. Because it's more than three. So three by four is more than three. So definitely it's uh, observable. So you last if it's less than three, it's two point seven. So you have to conclude saying that uh, most respondent thinks that these products is not observable at all. It's not observable. Okay, can I? The product is not observable. The same thing with uh, common capability. Okay, common capability and uh, the, the other variables that you have in the study. So let's say uh, adoption intention. Okay, adoption intention is more than three. So you have to conclude saying that uh, the mean, let's say, is more than three. Yeah? So you have to conclude saying that most respondents thinks that uh, they no no most respondents are willing to adopt this product. They have the intention to adopt this product. They have the willingness to adopt these products. Okay, this is how you interpret uh, the uh, results for the items, including the grant, the total mean for the variable. Okay, so for this one, okay, for 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 one variable, you have to interpret the descriptive results for all the items including the grand mean okay including the grand mean okay that is for descriptive
Okay, the next is normality test. Okay, normality test. Okay, let me go to the output and search for normal and search for the normality test results. Over here. Okay, this is the one. The normality test. Okay, this is how the result looks like. I'm going to put it nicely so that I can interpret it later. Okay, but of course, uh, you are not allowed to just copy and paste this uh, table and put it into your FYP. You're not allowed to do so. Uh. Please withdraw the table as well, according to the one that I showed you earlier in the uh, workshop. Okay, so over here, we can see uh, for normality test, we have skewness, we have kurtosis. So what you have to do is you have to state that the skewness and kurtosis levels for the, vari for the, for the variables. Then you have to compare it with the allowed range. So what it means by allowed range, okay, uh, for normality test, skewness and kurtosis, we will usually refer to Josh and Mallory as well. Okay, let's say you are using Josh and Mallory. Okay, the allowed or acceptable range for skewness and kurtosis should be within plus minus two. Plus minus two. Okay, so if we go back to the results of our skewness and kurtosis, okay, you will realize that for skewness, all the all the values are within positive and negative two. Okay, this is 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.248, uh, 0 0.6. Okay, 0 0.6. It's not even one. The same thing for kurtosis. Okay, all the values are within the range. Okay, are within the range of plus minus two. So what we have to do is uh, over here, we have to interpret it this way. Okay, the skewness values for all four variables of these all four variables are within the acceptable range of minus two and plus two as suggested by notch and Mallory. okay then you can you can you can further elaborate them okay the skewness values are negative 0 0.248 for observability, negative 0 0.619 for communicability. Negative 0 0.691 for trialability and negative 0 0.909 for adoption intention. Okay. Uh, you can you can put it this way. Then the same thing, do it for kurtosis. Okay, the same thing. The kurtosis values blah 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 you type it yourself okay you do it the same thing for the kurtosis value as well then lastly you are required to conclude it this way okay so conclude this way saying that since okay seeing this way yeah okay so this is how good interpret it huh? so the kurtosis and skewness values are all within the acceptable range. Therefore, the, okay, this, uh, the model, the data set is assumed to be well modeled by a normal distribution. Therefore, the data set is assumed, not is assumed. Uh, we won't use the word assume now, we already have the results, right? So we can just conclude saying that the data set is well modeled by a normal distribution. Then lastly, you conclude saying that that so it, look, we have used the word therefore, right? So you conclude saying that multiple linear regressions uh 
over here. Okay, we can just see over here. Like, you can see multiple linear regression analysis will not be abandoned. Okay, or we will just we will just say we okay. I think it's better we treat it this way, like, Okay. Therefore, the data is well modeled by a normal distributions. Parametric tests, such as multiple linear regression, will be used to answer the hypothesis of the study in the next section. Okay, will be used will be used to answer the hypothesis of the study in the next section. Okay, okay. So then, this is how you should uh interpret it. Okay, uh, what does it mean by skewness and kurtosis? Okay, what does it means? Okay, what does it means? Huh? okay. Uh. I would like to draw something. Okay, I'd like to draw. Okay, this is how a graph should look alike. This is how a normal graph should look alike. So this is considered as normal distribution. This is considered as normal distribution if it is within the range. The one normal is in black. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I will show you if let's say the skewness is not within the range the skew let's say the skew is more than two okay let's see yeah, the skewness value let's say the skewness value is more than two okay let's say the skewness value is very high it's positive eight positive ten okay let's say it's positive eight or positive ten you realize that your graph will look something like this skew to the positive so over here will be flat skewed towards the right side, skewed towards the positive. Okay. So if let's say the skewness uh value is high in negative, so the value the, the graph will look something like this. It's skewed to the left. Okay, so this is the skew, skew to left. So it is something negative, it's a high negative value. So the same thing, if it goes to the right side, this is the skew, but it will be a high positive value. Okay, it will be a high positive value. Okay, nah? okay. I'm going to draw again this uh, normal distribution. This is how it looks like. Okay, for a normal. So what about, what about kurtosis? Okay, a low kurtosis will be something like this will be something like this or extremely sharp up okay extremely sharp going upwards and down okay so that is how a non-normal uh kurtosis uh graph will look like okay that's uh, a simple elaboration like, okay demonstration to to explain why we would say that uh the data for these studies is considered as a well model by a normal distribution. Why the distribution is normal? Okay, because of the skewness and kurtosis are within the range uh, uh, stated by uh, the researchers, okay, by the, those uh, statistic researchers. So when the model or when the data is normally distributed, okay, we can use parametric tests. Okay, there are, there are so many parametric tests in SPSS. Okay, and one of it will be multiple linear regression. Okay, so it's quite common for us to have a normal distribution. Okay, and it allows us to run multiple linear regression to answer the hypothesis. Okay, to answer the hypothesis of the study. Okay, now? so parametric test, so multiple linear regression will be a type of parametric test. So this uh, normality test is some sort of like a, it's like a key. Is that a key that allows you to use parametric tests like multiple linear regression? So if you do not, if your skewness and kurtosis values do does not, okay, both values if they do not pass, they are not within the range. You are not allowed to use parametric tests. So my suggestion to you is, if, if let's say 
the skewness and kurtosis value are high. They are not normally distributed. One of the way for you to reduce it into the normal range is to increase the sample size. Let's say you've collected 100 samples, 100 responses. You might want to consider to increase it to 150. You might see the skewness and kurtosis value falls into the normal range. Okay, you can increase, you can choose to increase the sample size. So the bigger the sample size, usually the data will be normal, dis normally distributed. It will allow you to use parametric tests. So that's why there are many researchers believe that if you want to, uh, if you want to have, or if you want to use parametric tests to answer hypotheses, you should ensure that your, uh, you should ensure that your sample size is above the minimum okay it's above the minimum okay nah? okay this is about normality that's okay, nah? okay the last one will be about multiple linear regression oh, oh, multiple linear regression eh? multiple linear regression okay the results uh for this study is uh it's not really that nice la Okay, I'll only take the, 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 the last three tables. Lah, okay, this is how the result looks like. I'm going to place it over here. Okay, the result doesn't look nice. Lah. Sorry to say. Lah. Because uh, this is uh, some sort of like, fake data. Okay, they have just prepared it. I'm just, I'm just uh, preparing just for a sample of, uh, for this workshop. Okay, in reality, uh, these, uh, these, these variables are not pointing towards adoption intention. Okay, in reality, in the actual study, it's not pointing towards the uh, adoption intention. Okay, so how are we going to explain, okay, for multiple linear regression? Okay, number one, what we will do is uh, we will usually begin with the F value. With the F value. Okay, the F and the F significant value. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. This is observability. Okay, the F value is here. No, no, not, 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 oh, sorry, not F value. I think there's a mistake here. Yeah, no, no, we start with the F value first, correct, is this one. Okay, so we're going to start with the F value first. So we have to state, uh, okay, okay, the results of uh, multiple linear regressions shows an F value of 1.092 with a significant value of 0 0.356. Okay, like what I said, this is a very poor result. Huh? This is a very poor result. So what it shows over here? Okay, what, what, what can you explain? Okay, this, this, this shows what? Okay, this 0 0.356, this significant value, this significant value is above the threshold of 0 0.05 it is above the threshold we use the word threshold or sometimes we call it as a significant uh uh confidence level okay confidence level okay it's above the uh confident threshold threshold of 0 0.05 therefore what it shows therefore shows that there is no significant relationship in the model between the independent variables and the dependent variable it's more than 0 0.05 it's more than 0 0.05 Okay, so it, it means that there is no significant relationship. There's not even a single, there's not even a single significant relationship in the model. Okay, I'll show you over here later. We discuss about the key significant value. Okay, if let's say your, your result appears to be like this, appear to be this way, you can stop. There's no need for there's no need for you to interpret the other values over there. There's no need for you to interpret the values over there. Okay, this is an example of the results. Like, okay, which I don't think is good. 
So I'm not going to use this. Okay, I'm not going to use this result. I think it's not a good result. So I will show you another example. Okay, I'll duplicate it. Okay, we use the results that I have it over here. Okay, this is the example. This is sample R. Okay, we use this uh, results sample. Okay, let's say you, you have obtained your results for multiple linear regression. This is how the result look alike. Okay, this is how the result look alike. Uh, the F and the F significant 0.0. .0. Okay, so over here, what you have to do is uh, the same thing. You have to interpret this way. Okay, shows the F value of uh, 2.54 with a significant value of 0 0.00. Okay, so this significant value is below the confidence threshold of 0 0.05. Therefore, it shows that there is at least one significant relationship between the, I, the independent variables like okay, type my IVs and the dependent variable of the model of the model okay so this at least there's at least one there's at least one significant relationship in the model so this is the first thing you have to report you have to report the f value okay you have to report the f value so once you're done with the F value, the next thing you did report is R square. R square. Okay, R square. Okay, the R square, hold on, uh, let me make it bigger, the words. Uh, okay, the R square value is recorded at 0 0.581. So what this what this value shows? What this value shows is our square values x our square value explains that the overall influence to let's say okay let's say yeah, these uh the dv is adoption intention okay to the dv let's say the dv is adoption intention. Okay, the overall influence uh, to DV, okay, from the three independents is for the three independent variables, okay, is at 58.1%. Okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? Okay, uh, let's see. Customer satisfaction, website interface, technology. These three are affecting a person adoption intention. Okay, but in reality class in the world, there are many other factors that are not covered in your study that may affect the adoption intention. There are other factors, there are other variables, there are other independent variables in the world that may affect this, this uh, dependent variable, but they are not covered in your study. So this r square value tells you that if we include all the factors that we have in the world, this tree contributes 58.1% to the adoption intention. So in other words, it, it also means that, okay, it also explains that Okay, 41.9% of the influence to adoption intention is not explained by the three independent variables of this study. Can you get it, class? So this tree contributes 58.1% to the adoption intention. So the remaining 41.9%, they are not explained at all in the study. So they are not explained at all by the three independent variables in this particular study. Okay, this is what the R square means, lah. Okay, for these particular results.
Okay, once you're done with this uh, R square and F value, then we will have to go to the T and T significant value. Okay, T and T significant value. So when it comes to the T value, okay, the T value, okay, you have to explain like, okay, the T value or customer satisfaction to adoption intention, okay, is recorded as 1.22 with the significant value of 0 0.03. So you have to explain saying that this significant value of 0 0.03 is below the 0 0.05 confidence threshold. So therefore, hypothesis one of the study is supported and it explains that there is a relationship between customer satisfaction and adoption intention. You have to refer back to your hypothesis in chapter three. So you have to say that the results is actually lesser than 0 0.05. The significant value is lesser than 0 0.05. So it says it shows that the hypothesis is supported and there is a relationship. There is a relationship. The hypothesis is supported. Okay, so if you look at technology. It is 0 0.25, it is more than 0 0.05. It is definitely more than 0 0.05. So how are you going to explain it? Okay, the same thing, you will say that, okay, the T value for technology is recorded at 1.45 with, with the significant value, significant value of 0 0.25. This significant value is above the 0 0.05 confidence threshold. So then you have to say, therefore, hypothesis three is not supported. It's not supported. Okay, I just type it as normal. Lab. Okay, it's not supported. And there is no relationship between technology and adoption intention. The key over here is it is since it is above, so the hypothesis is not supported, and there is no relationship. Okay, so this is how we report the hypothesis, and we've we have also answered the hypothesis. Okay, so from here, what it indicates? Okay, what it indicates? It indicates that, okay, indicates that the lower, the lower is your significant value, the stronger is the in the relationship between these two variables. So it means that, okay, when so in this diagram, you you should know that okay, zero for zero three, the significant value for customer satisfaction is the lowest. So customer satisfaction should be influencing adoption intention stronger than website interface and technology okay this is what the t significant values means okay when it comes to standardized data same thing okay, the higher it is the influence the influence from iv to dv is stronger so from here you can see the one with the lowest key significant value will usually come with the highest standardized beta value. So from here we can also conclude saying that based on the standardized beta, customer satisfaction plays the strong has the strongest influence to adoption intention compared to website interface and technology. Okay, so the higher is it. So how can we explain it? Okay, from here we explain this way. Okay. From the standardized beta values, it 
shows that it not values the day show that customer satisfaction has the strongest influence to adoption intention compared to website interface and technology. Okay, we elaborate this week, but you add the values at the side. So customer satisfaction, the standardized beta value is 0 0.64, put it next to read. Strongest influence to AI compared to website interface. So website interface, standardized beta is 0 0.50. And technology is, and that's beta equals to 0 0.40. Okay, this is how we explain lah. Okay, the influence when the standardized beta value is higher, the influence from the DB to the IV is stronger. Okay, this is how we explain or we elaborate the standardized beta value lah. Okay, standardized beta value. Okay, some of you will be wondering, sir, uh, what does it mean by this key significant value? What does it mean by key significant value? Okay, so now I will end uh, this session with a simple uh, explanation on what actually is key significant value. Okay, example, you have 100 respondents. Okay, we, like, just like my sample, there are 100 respondents, right? So if you want to prove, if you want to prove that customer satisfaction will significant well uh no customers uh customer satisfaction have relationship with adoption intention if you want to prove this is your hypothesis let's say the hypothesis one is that there is a relationship between customer satisfaction and adoption intention okay that is your first hypothesis so if you want to make sure that there's a relationship you want to confirm it you must have at least 95% of your respondents agree. Okay, showing. 95% of the respondents show, showing a relationship between customer satisfaction and, and adoption intention. Must at least 20, at least 95% your respondents showing a relationship so it means what it must be at least 95 of them it must be at least 95 of them show that there's a relationship between this and this so what if what if your respondents are 100 10 of them 10 of them showing that there is no relationship so it means what it means that it is not significant so this 95% is equivalent to the threshold, the 0 0.05 confident threshold. So this is the benchmark. This is the benchmark. So if let's say your significant value, okay, so let's say, yeah, example, let's say your significant value is 0 0.0, 0 0.12. If let's say your significant value is 0 0.12. So this 0 0.12 is actually more than the 0 0.05 threshold, confidence threshold, confidence threshold, right? So when it is more than that, means what? This this result also shows that out of 180, only 88 show relationship between customer satisfaction and adoption intention whereas the remaining 12 of them show no relationship so based on this result we cannot conclude saying that they have relationship between customers uh, customer satisfaction and adoption intention because according to statistics at least 95 percent must show only we can conclude saying that this is a norm in the society okay we, we we cannot say that okay we cannot say that uh, all guys are smart 
we cannot say that guys are smarter than females unless you are able to prove that in the world 95 percent of the males are smarter than females if 95 percent of the males are smarter than females only you can conclude saying that there is a relationship but if you are not able to show a 95 percent results then though so you have to assume that there is no relationship so it goes to saying unless you cannot prove that 95 percent of males are smarter than females you cannot conclude saying that in the world males are farm are smarter than females you cannot conclude that way so this is how we uh analyze or interpret the key significant value okay the key significant value okay uh i think that's all that's all for today's uh, SPSS workshop for uh, data entry, data analysis, and data reporting plus interpretation for the SPSS. Okay, this uh this one this workshop definitely is for, uh, is suitable for a uh, bachelor's degree lah. Okay, uh bachelor's degree or final year project. Okay, so that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate lah. Okay, to email to me. My personal email okay stanley at gmail.com okay thank you for your time and uh, good luck in your final year project thank you